3.13 practice problems. The diagrams above show an ultraviolet absorption spectra for two compounds. Diagram one is the absorption spectrum for pure acetone, a solvent used when preparing the absorbance uh, needs to be measured to determine its concentration. When a student reads the absorption of the solution at 280 nanometers, the results are too high. Which of the following is most likely responsible for the error in the absorbed, uh, the measure absorbance? So uh, these two things should match, but they don't. So we are looking for something that is either uh, wrong with the uh, acetone, it is not pure acetone like it should be, or there is something wrong with the measurement system like we forgot to calibrate. Uh, too little solute to acetone, we are looking for this to be uh, acetone, so that's not gonna match. Student rich, uh, rinse the cuvette with the solution before filling the cuvette with the solution. Uh, no, that would help. It would make sure it was clean. Uh, the student forgot to calibrate the spectrophotometer first by using a cuvette containing only acetone. Uh, that's one of the possible errors. Uh, we forgot to calibrate the machine. And the wavelength setting was accidentally changed from 280 nanometers to 300 nanometers before the student uh, made the measurement. Um, that is not gonna, gonna change the fact that we still have an absorbance that is too high here. Uh, so option choice C um, is going to be our best, our best choice. A student uses visible spectrophotometry, spec, spectrophotometry to determine the concentration of cobalt-2 chloride in a sample solution. The first student prepares a set of cobalt-2 chloride solutions of known concentration. Then the student uses a spectrophotometer to determine the absorbance at each of the standard solutions at a wavelength of 510 nanometers and constructs a standard curve. Finally, the student determines the absorption uh, the absorbance of the sample of unknown concentration. The student made the standard curve above. Which of the following most likely caused the error point uh, the student plotted for the 0 0.05 molar cobalt 2 uh, chloride? So we are not quite as high of an absorbance as we should be, so that means that I'm looking at something where I have uh, less cobalt-2 than expected. So option choice A says that there was distilled water in the cuvette when the uh, student put this standard solution in. This would lower the overall amount of cobalt that was present, so that looks good. There were a few drops of the 0.1 molar uh, cobalt standard solution in the cuvette that would raise uh, the absorbance, not lower it. The student used a cuvette with a longer path length than the cuvette used. Uh, no, we're using the same cuvettes. Did not run a blank between the 0 0.05 uh, cuvette and the one before it. Uh, that would not decrease the amount that we see there. So. Um, it being contaminated by extra water, thereby lowering the overall concentration, is going to be our best choice. So answer choice A. Uh, we have um, iron 3 plus uh, a, a potassium sulfur and cyanide compound going to the iron uh, sulfur cyanide compound and potassium. To determine the moles of iron-3 in a 100 milliliter sample of an unknown solution, excess of uh, potassium sulfur cyanide uh, was, is added to convert all of the iron-3 into dark uh, species of iron-3 uh, sulfur cyanide, as represented by the equation above. The absorbance of the iron sulfur cyanide compound at different concentrations is shown in the graph below. If the absorbance of uh, the mixture is 0.2 at uh, 453 nanometers, uh, how many moles 
of the iron three are present in the 100 milliliter sample. So we are looking at 0.2, and uh, so we are, uh, each of these is gonna be one, so this is four times 10 to the negative uh, fifth, and it is uh, per 100 moles. Uh, so we are going to, uh, since molarity is moles per liter, and that's what this is currently in, we need to move the decimal over one more time. So it is going to be four times 10 to the negative sixth uh, moles of the iron three. Using a spectrophotometer, a student measures the absorbance of four solutions of copper to sulfate at a given wavelength. The collected data is given in the table opposite. Which of the following is most likely is the most likely explanation for the discrepant data in trial number four? Uh, so we are increasing our uh, concentration of uh, copper here, and then we are looking at our um, uh, absorbance here. So um, looking at uh, these things I am doubling doubling and then half and so I should uh, look at approximately 1.5 uh, times higher than this so this is lower than 1.5 times higher than that and so uh, that would tell me that I have a lower concentration than I was expecting um, because my absorbance isn't as high as I was expecting. So option choice D <clears throat> would be the best representation of that. A student prepared five solutions of copper two sulfate with different concentrations and then filled five cuvettes, uh, each containing one of the solutions. The cuvettes were placed in the spectrophotometer set to the appropriate wavelength for the maximum absorption absorbance. The absorbance for each of the solutions is measured and recorded. The student plotted the absorbance versus the concentration as shown in the figure above. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for the variance of the data point of the 0.6 molar uh, copper 2 sulfate solution? So we can see that the 0.6 molar copper sulfate solution is higher than we were expecting. It's a higher absorbance than we were expecting. It's almost the same as the 0.8. So this uh, I would uh, I would suspect that we have more of the uh, copper two sulfate than we were initially anticipating. So um, option choice A had some water droplets inside that would lower the uh, concentration, but we actually um, are seeing a higher concentration than initially expected, so that doesn't make any sense. Option choice B, the cuvette into which the 0.6 molar solution was placed is slightly more filled uh, than the other cuvettes. That's not going to affect our absorbance. Uh, the wavelength setting was accidentally moved away from that of the maximum absorbance. Uh, then we would have a lower absorbance, not less, or sorry, not more. And then we have option choice D, the cuvette used for the 0.6 molar solution had not been wiped clean before putting it into the spectrophotometer. So uh, this could mean that it is contaminated and we have a higher concentration of the copper two sulfate than we should have had. And therefore that is a good reason for um, our data to be off. Okay, uh, each student in a class is placed, uh, uh, in a class placed point a two gram sample of a mixture of copper and aluminum in a beaker and place that beaker in a fume hood. The students slowly pour 15 milliliters of a 15.8 molar uh, nitric acid solution into their beakers. The reaction between the copper and the mixture of the nitric acid is represented in the equation above. Students observed that a brown gas was released from the beakers and that the solution turned blue, indicating a formation of copper two. The solutions were then diluted with distilled water to known volumes. 
Uh, to determine the number of moles of copper in the sample of the mixture, the students measured the absorbance of known concentration of copper to nitrate using a spectrophotometer. A cuvette filled uh, with some of the solution produced from the sample of the mixture was also tested. The data recorded by one student is shown in the table opposite. On the basis of the data provided, which of the following is a possible error that the student made? So we have um, each of our uh, concentrations, they are doubling and our absorbance is um, not quite doubling, but um, something going on there. Uh, we definitely have a, uh, an outlier here. We have a drop in uh, absorbance for the 0.1. And so that is going to be uh, a, a, a big thing. It actually looks like these two should be reversed and then we would have um, a pretty good doubling going on with each of the increasing concentrations and therefore uh, it would better help us uh, predict the concentration of our unknown sample. So we have uh, that the uh, copper two nitrate of the sample of the mixture was not diluted properly. Um, maybe, but that's not going to explain our uh, strange errors here. The spectrophotometer was calibrated with tap water instead of distilled water. Um, that is going to be a, uh, an error that will continue throughout the entire experiment, and so would uh, we would expect that to be the same throughout and not pr provide this strange uh, reversing of data. The student labeled the cuvettes incorrectly, reversing the labels of two solutions of known concentration. Now this is something that seems pretty reasonable since these two are uh, seem to be inversed uh, and aren't following the approximate doubling of absorbance that we had been seeing or expected to see. So that seems pretty reasonable. And then finally, the spectrophotometer was originally set with an inappropriate wavelength, causing the absorbance to vary unpredictably. If we have uh, the same wavelength throughout, uh, the absorbance will uh, still go through. Um, it just won't be the maximum absorbance. However, the reversing of these two labels is um, a pretty reasonable expectation since these two absorbances seem to be uh, reversed and are not following the approximate doubling of absorbance that we would have expected.